Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. CD Projekt's approach to game development has widely been criticised for crunch culture and friction between management and the rest of the development teams. After the immense success of The Witcher 3, the studio became a household name among gamers and built a brand of consumer goodwill above all else. However, the director of that game, Konrad Tomaskevich, left the studio following accusations of workplace bullying according to an internal email shared with Bloomberg. Tomaskevich was investigated by CD Projekt and found not guilty of bullying but chose to resign anyway, saying, Nonetheless, a lot of people are feeling fear, stress or discomfort when working with me and went on to apologise for all the bad blood I have caused. Since he was director of The Witcher 3, he clearly played a huge role in creating that game and thus helped shape what CD Projekt is today. Well, I guess that was until the disaster that was Cyberpunk 2077 where he served as its second director and the company is still yet to recover. Tomaskevich's departure was agreed upon by the company's board of directors, and while it is said to be a resignation, not a firing, I can't help but feel like he was asked to leave. When asked to comment, he said he felt sad, a bit disappointed, and resigned, which doesn't sound like a totally mutual breakup to me, but who really knows? In his email, he also said, I'm going to continue working on myself. Changing behaviour is a long and arduous process, but I'm not giving up, and I hope to change. Whether the bullying claims are true or not, the main thing we can learn from this is that there is clearly something going on at CD Projekt Management. While he was found not guilty of bullying, complaints like that don't come from nowhere and when you add that to the existing concerns around crunch, it doesn't paint a pretty picture. Matty Lissonen, an analyst at Bernstein Autonomous LLP, said all the signs point to serious ongoing problems with morale and culture. I mean, anyone with a brain who's been paying attention for the past 12 months could tell you that, but coming from an actual professional analyst adds a little more credibility to that line of thinking. I think we can all agree that the blame for Cyberpunk's failings comes down to its management and marketing. The regular devs grinding away at work like the rest of us were just doing their jobs to the best of their ability, but it's the failure of management that led to this whole debacle. I've said it before and I will say it again, one day Cyberpunk will be a great game. I can't tell you when exactly that day will be, but with every patch it gets just a little bit closer. Until then, forget about DLCs or extra content, just get the game polished up properly and I'll happily jump back in. In other Cyberpunk news, the game received its 1.22 patch last week which aimed to fix a number of issues relating to the quests and the open world, visuals, UI and stability performance in addition to specific fixes for console and Stadia. And speaking of Stadia, I might as well tuck this one in here while we're on the topic of people leaving. Google Stadia's head of product, John Justice, just left the company. What a kick-ass name, John Justice. Hopefully he's starting a career as a superhero because if not, he's wasting his gift. The future of Stadia isn't looking too great as it recently shut down internal game development at Stadia Games in February and Jade Raymond, who led development teams, also bounced in March to form a new studio for Sony. There you go, a little bonus in your daily triple, don't say I never do anything for you. And next up, I've long said that the future of FIFA as a game franchise should be as a free-to-play battle pass type model that can be updated to match the seasons of the real sport. It could even be monetized with cosmetic skins for kits or whatever since it would be a free game. EA has taken that idea and seems to be exploring options for a post loot box FIFA. Cosmetics used to be unlockable in game through completing objectives or in the ultimate team loot boxes, but now they are available through direct purchases for the first time as part of a limited time event. That limited time event has now been and gone, but those cosmetics included a TIFO, a stadium theme, and home and away kits. These can be purchased individually or as part of a bundle. The obvious problem with this is why are microtransactions being put in a full price game in the first place? But beyond that, some are arguing that this is overpriced. Personally, I don't even really have an opinion on that as I think the whole game is overpriced so my thoughts aren't worth much and these whales will still lap it all up. Cosmetics can be bought with a premium currency or FIFA points or with FUT coins which can be earned by playing FIFA Ultimate Team, the game's loot box mode. A TIFO costs 150 points or £1.20, a stadium is 200 points or 175 a kit is 300 points or 250 and the whole bundle is 700 points or £6. Some have taken issue with the pricing, especially when it comes to the FIFA Ultimate Team coins. One TIFO is 11,500, a stadium is 15,000, a kit is 25,000 and the bundle is 60,000. For comparison, you can spend 45,000 on FIFA Ultimate Team points on a prime gold player pack loot box which guarantees 12 players all of which will be gold tier and at least six will be rare. Honestly, again, I don't have the energy to talk about this being overpriced since I'd never spend a penny on FIFA 
anyway, and I'm sure most of my audience wouldn't either. I just don't care. The most interesting part about this whole thing for me, though, is that this seems to be EA testing the water for the future of the franchise. With various parts of the world taking the loot box situation seriously, or at least paying a little closer attention to the concerns of child gambling, EA seems to be trialing this way of making extra money, which, while not perfect, is still far better than Ultimate Team. There is a workable idea in here somewhere, but this isn't it. Just literally copy Fortnite's business model of making it free, but selling cosmetics. You wouldn't need to release a game every single year, and it could be regularly updated to reflect the team changes. Play the regular game for free with the same mechanics and gameplay, but add a Battle Pass type system where you can get different kits, different stadiums, even haircuts on all of these vain footballers. If they were really that desperate, they could do a free version and then a subscription version to get the live team updates. It seems so obvious to me. Even saying this out loud, we just know EA would still somehow find a way to bugger it all up. And finally, after rumours recently that Microsoft was in talks to potentially acquire Discord, it seems like Sony has got its own deal sorted. Rather than outright buying the chat client, Sony will partner with Discord to integrate the app into PlayStation. On the Sony blog, President and CEO Jim Ryan said, At PlayStation, we're constantly looking for new ways to enable players around the world to connect with one another, form new friendships and communities, and share fun experiences and lasting memories. It's in this spirit that we're excited to announce a new partnership with Discord, the communication service popularised by gamers and used by more than 140 million people every month around the world. This is clearly a different deal to what Microsoft was negotiating, since that was to outright buy Discord, this is just a partnership. Sony does not own Discord by any means, but it has made a minority investment into the company. Getting Discord on PSN will make gaming together on the platform much, much easier. Sony's built-in party system is so awful and unreliable, this is great news to my ears, and don't even get me started on in-game chat. Anytime I play on PlayStation with a friend we still call through Discord anyway on our own phones. This integration won't be happening until early next year, but in the meantime, if you want to have a little fun, read through the announcement suite threads to watch Console War idiots see them whine until your heart's content. And that's your lot for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. That's all for today. I've been Henry Cooper. Bye for now.